So today we are very lucky to have Jason Adcock with us and we are going to be talking to Jason today about the power of building a personal brand. Obviously, Jason operates as Adcock Prestige, selling Brisbane's finest since 2002. And in 2002, carved out a niche to only sell properties over a million dollars. Um, I graduated from school in 2000. I remember one of my friend's parents bought a house for 250,000. I thought they were ballers. That was when Jason set his niche as million plus. So um, we are going to get a real insight into Jason's business. This is an incredible opportunity. I'm going to ask a stack of questions and there will be an opportunity for you to put your hand up and holler out any questions that you want to know. Let's give it up for Jason Adcock. Welcome, mate. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. You may uh, remember Jason from such previous productions as <laughs> Drive By Dan. I'm still running that. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, fantastic actually. 288,000 social media views on that property. That was one number that stood out to me. There's seven million plus was the other number that stood out to me. Went for a million over reserve. A million over reserve. Yeah. Unbelievable. They're big numbers to be calling out. I'd be adding up the com in my head. I'd be like, seven million, that's, I don't know, <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> 182, 500. Oh, is that what you're doing in the background? <laughs> nice. <laughs> 182 grand commission. <laughs> Um, okay, so Jason, I've got a stack of questions and let's just uh, jump into it. Yep. Um, so you have built, I would say, one of the most incredible businesses in Australia under your own personal brand uh, with a very strong niche. Your niche is million dollar plus luxury homes in Brisbane. Yep. That, that's what we said back in 2002 when we kicked off the brand and, and back then a million dollar home back then was probably the equivalent of a 2.5 to 2.7 million dollar home now. So, so, so my question to you is, in 2002, when you set this uh, niche, how many homes were selling over a million dollars a year? There was only 109 homes in Brisbane sold over a million dollars in 2002. It seems like a bit of a weird niche, doesn't it? Whereas there's thousands today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 109 homes 109. a year. So what made you select that niche? Okay, back in... Um, Late 2001, I was called in on uh, a riverfront property uh, in Jesmond Road at Fig Tree Pocket. Do you have uh, a seat? Yeah, yeah, at Fig Tree Pocket uh, that was worth around about four million. Um, I was pitching up against uh, an agent that, that is long out of the game now. It was a guy by the name of Sean Tobin who ran uh, Ray White Prestige. He was the, the principal of Ray White Prestige in Brisbane. And uh, I missed the listing. <laughs> I, I missed the listing to Sean Tobin and I was absolutely filthy. Uh, and at that stage, I had uh, an agency, we had about 20 salespeople, seven and admin, and our average sale was around about 350,000, but I, I handled all the prestige sales that were going through the office. And I missed out on it, and I was just filthy. I've, I've got on the phone to uh, the sellers, and I said, look, I'm really disappointed that I missed out on the listing, but I'd really like to know why you've given it to the other agent. We've both been in the game, same amount of time, why did you give it to the other agent? She said, it's a very easy decision, Jason. Sean just specialises in homes over a million dollars. Your agency sells everything. He's a specialist. And I'll tell you what, instead of getting pissed off, mm. I got off the phone and I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do because I can't, I'm not going to be missing out on, you know, a $4 million listings to other people because I'm perceived as not being uh, the prestige specialist. So I already had a business at that stage called Brisbane West Real Estate, which is still around today. Um, uh, and what I did is I set up Adcock Prestige, specifically uh, to target the properties over a million dollars uh, back in 2002. Uh, and I, I drew a lot. All hundred of them? What's that? All hundred there, of there them? There was only 109 sold that year. But I said to myself, if he can do it, I can do it. And uh, followed the formula. Just um, drew a line in the sand. I was personally not going to take on any other properties um, below that million dollar figure. And, you know, back when we established it sort of early in 2002, I think that year our average sale probably was just over $2 million back then in, in 2002. Okay, so let's really like deep dive into this. You've yep. already said a couple of things that are amazing. If he can do it, I can too. I think yep. that's absolutely fantastic. Judy Goodger was dominant when I yep. started in real estate in 2004. And I met her once and... I, my thoughts were, if you can do it, I can too. <laughs> you know, respectfully. Like, 
Well, you know, I mean, yeah. you, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm t 20. You, you yeah. think you're going to yeah. meet some freak, right? Yeah. Uh, and you quickly realise if you can do it, I can too. And hopefully that's what you take from Jason today, you know, uh, yeah. is that, you know, you got two arms. Oh, actually, actually, that's even irrelevant now, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if, 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 you, if someone can do it, you can too, yeah. The other thing I, I like that you just said there is you carved out your niche and then you drew a line in the sand. So can you just talk to us more about that? Like, what do you mean by Okay, so basically, um, uh, if I had uh, someone ring up, and I had lots of people ringing up because I... You, know, you had a business. Yeah, we had a business. We were on a roll. We had people coming up, ringing up that had six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars listings. I wasn't taking them on. I was obviously referring them back into our other business at the time, which was Brisbane Real Estate, uh, Brisbane West Real Estate, but I wouldn't uh, take them under the Adcock Prestige brand. They had to be over a million dollars, but they also had to spend on vendor paid advertising as well. I wouldn't take the listing on unless they spent vendor paid advertising, and it had to be either an auction or an expressions of interest. So they were my criteria for moving forward into that space. Um, they had to be um, listing on my terms. Mm. Um, so that's, that's really quite powerful. And I know a lot of agents get scared about carving out a niche. Yep. I think I can probably preempt that you're going to say building a niche is critical. Absolutely critical. <laughs> um, so a lot of people struggle with carving out a niche and it's the build phase. Yep. So just, can you just talk us through, you had all this business coming in, quite yep. successful, you lost a listing, decided to throw everything out the window and start have, again. Start again. Yep. Million plus only. Yes. How much business did you have to walk away from during that time? And like, oh, what, what, for, 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 how, how did for, you do it? Well, first year I probably turned away 40 or $50 million worth of stock but I, I referred it back into the business. I was still getting, I was lucky enough to sort of get a cut on that on the way back. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just, I just, what you've got to understand is no matter what niche you're in, right? And there's lots of different niches. You might be uh, focusing on a suburb or two different suburbs. You might be focusing, focusing just on apartments. More of what you sell is more of what you attract. So you've got to make sure that you're selling what you want to attract. So regardless of what that is, the more you list of something, the more you get back in return. And I, I knew that from the word go, that I wanted to be known as the person that only sold those, those properties over a million dollars. And I've got to tell you, back in 2002, I had 90% of the real estate industry laughing at me, saying, hey, buddy, do you realise <laughs> there was only 109 sales made over a million dollars uh, in that year? And it's like, well, yeah, I know that, but I want to get the market share. And obviously it grew. I mean, look so at it today. You, There's like probably 3,000 uh, sales over a million dollars in Brisbane. Did you have, I know you were still getting a lick because you still yep. own the business, but did you yep. have a real personally step back in personal sales in that first year? No, you were, no, no, you didn't. No. So how long did it take to take off? You drew a line in the sand. Okay, uh, to really build momentum, it only took six months. Six months, yeah. It only took six months. Um, so uh, it all uh, started uh, with... Um, uh, a property uh, at Ascot. It was uh, owned by the Raptuses. Uh, it had gone through a failed uh, campaign uh, through Ray White at Clayfield, and I was just on the door. I was ringing them up. In the end, they just agreed to see me because they didn't want me calling or knocking on the door anymore. <laughs> and I sat down with them. I was just, I had so much energy and enthusiasm back then. It wasn't fun, it was 2002. Back then, I got a $39,000 campaign out of these people. Um, we marketed the property and we sold it for $2.7 million, which I'm telling you back now in 2002 mm, is like $6 million. That property did sell the other day uh, in December um, uh, in Kitchener Road and it did sell for $6 million. A few owners are on since then. So, uh, but, uh, and we had the biggest ads we could possibly do in the Courier Mail back then. Uh, they were full page ads. Um, and look, we, we, you know, there was a bit of internet, but there was no digital marketing or anything like that. Uh, we had uh, a massive auction. We had probably 400 people at this particular home for the auction. I had a three-piece um, uh, band, uh, uh, you know, on the violin and all that sort of stuff in the foyer as they were coming into the auction. Um, and yeah, I went off. That was, I didn't sell it under the hammer. We passed it in at, I think it was about 2.65 and I sold it uh, probably a couple of days later for 2.7. But the leverage and the power that I got from that was my phone lit up. 
It just absolutely lit up. I, I, off the back of that, I probably got another six or seven listings at Ascot and Hamilton just like that. It was just because those sellers, they were at that auction. They liked what they saw. Mm. They'd never seen an auction conducted that day like we conducted that day. I don't think I've done one since, <laughs> but I put, I put it all into it. <laughs> you know, I, I had the big um, six litre uh, um, bottle of... Uh, uh, Verve, you know, ready to give the seller in the big ice bucket in the centre of the foyer. We, we went over the top. Yeah, but yeah. I wanted to impress like people and say, hey, I've arrived. I'm the guy that you want to speak to if you're selling multi-million dollar homes. So it took you six months and then you got this sale that kind of then set you off. No, that was, that was three months in. Okay. That was three months in, but six months in, we were humming. We had 20 multi-million dollar listings and we were going hard. So during I actually got someone into the business, buy into the business then because it was so busy. Wow. So during those first three months when you first decided to walk away from anything under a million dollars, what were you focused on to get that first one? Were you just like, how were you okay, going? Okay, now- what, what were you doing? Okay, what I did um, is I made a database of all the properties that had sold over a million dollars uh, in Brisbane uh, within uh, an eight to nine kilometre band of the city. Um, I put them on a postal database and I started sending them postcards, just postcards. Every time I listed a property, every time I sold a property with my mug on it uh, on the back, but the photograph of the property on the front and what it sold for. And then a little list on the back that said, Riverfront, sold for such and such. Or, and it said, sold by Jason Adcock recently. Penthouse, sold for 2.2. Now they were getting that all the time. Now what ended up happening is my greatest source of listings back then in that first six months periods was the postcards. They were getting these postcards. They were saying, oh my God, this guy's listing another one. He's selling another one. Look at the sales that he's got on the back. And I never put the address on the back. I just said what it was, whether it was a riverfront, whether it was a penthouse, whether it was acreage, whether it was a classic home, whether it was a Queenslander. So they could identify with their house with, 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 with what was sold. Mm, smart. So that was unbelievable. And I've got to tell you, I was thinking, as I was driving here today, and I knew you'd ask me that question, I think I'm going to go back and do a few postcards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you now because no one else is. No one, I mean, I, I obviously do a ton of digital marketing, but I think I might start the postcards up again. And there's, a, there's an avenue for spoke if they're, if they're <laughs> watching. Uh, one of the things that I think you'll uh, really notice as we talk to Jason today is just constant evolution, like literally constant evolution. It was, you know, I missed out on a sale, let's ad adapt the business and go million plus. Postcards, you know, and then it's been the paper, full page, digital, and we're gonna talk about digital in a minute, like off the charts, uh, engagement with digital, Spoke's biggest customer by a long shot. So um, we, we're gonna really get into that, but you know, there's a lesson in that, that constant evolution, not this is the way I do my listing presentation, or this is the way, that, this is what I send out beforehand or whatever, yeah. and then it sits like that static for five years, actually like reviewing it every, how long do you actually review your business practices? Oh, uh, every quarter? Yeah. Yep, every quarter we look at, we break it apart and look about what we're doing and what we can improve. Nice. Okay, so we've kind of set the tone on, um, you wanted to, I guess, attract business. You wanted to get known for something and have yep. a specialty. You made the difficult- I want to be the go-to person. Yeah. Without yeah. having to get on the phone. Yeah, without, yeah. And I like what you said, what you sell is what you attract. You know, just ding, ding, ding that. What you sell is what you attract. So, have so you want to make sure you're selling what you really love selling. Yeah, you could do a quick look on your own website right now and, and, and look Sometimes at Sometimes you've got a cull. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's, so let's fast forward to yep. uh, today. Yep. So that path obviously continued. Three yep. months in, you started seeing headway. Six months in, it really took off. Rocketed off, yeah. Rocketed off. And what's, give us a, a, a quick sort of snapshot of what's happened since then to today. Average sale price, how much are you selling a year? Okay, uh, we did about 83 million last year in sales. Uh, and obviously a very difficult year, yeah. it, was, it was bizarre, but we really did up the ante um, uh, during uh, t t 2020, particularly with the digital marketing. We just, we upped it. Look, I'm, I'm currently spending around about 20 grand a month on self-promo. Uh, we're roughly spending around about 10% of our commission on self-promo. So uh, average sale at the moment is probably around about $3.2 million. Uh, average marketing campaign is probably around about sixteen to seventeen thousand, but I've got some campaigns that go up to forty and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. So there's a couple of things I want to cover off on uh, there, which is really interesting. You mentioned 
80 million, that's about 2 million. Just in over G, 2 million. Just over yeah. 2 million in GCI. I've worked out you're spending about 240,000 on yep. self promotion. Just self promo, yeah. In addition to all of the VPA. That's right. We've got VPA of probably around about six to 700,000 a year wow. going through. Yeah. And that's obviously spread through, obviously, a lot of digital. And we've gone back hard in print uh, just in the last, say, three to four months as well, because it's become a real value equation now. Um, I mean, uh, the, the prices I'm getting charged at the moment for print is about uh, a quarter of what it was a year ago. Mm. So, and, and they're giving you free digital marketing too with the print. So mm. I'm actually getting clients asking me to go in the paper again, because it, it is value now. It, was, it wasn't a value a year ago. You know, one of the things that's just striking me at the moment, we just had Curtis McGrath uh, talk and he was talking about uh, uh, one of the events that he'll be competing in at the Tokyo Olympics. And since he started it, I think he said it's in 2015 or thereabouts, he's never been beaten once. Yep. And the question that I asked him off stage was, how the hell do you maintain motivation if no one's ever beaten you? Yep. Uh, and, and, and not slip into complacency. You're... You've been selling now for a long time. You've had 27 ADCOC, years now. 27 years. You've had Ad Adcock <laughs> Prestige since 2002. Yet you're still investing somewhere between two and two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. Absolutely. Back into your own. I've always invested 10% of my commission into self promotion, even when I started back in 1994. I came from a business background before I came uh, into real estate, and what you've really got to understand about real estate. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. You've got to constantly be promoting yourself and marketing yourself. Obviously, the ways that I market myself out there in the public now are completely changed to what they were back then, but the, 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 it hasn't stopped. I've still, I still keep on spending the money to make sure that I'm relevant, and I just obviously making sure that I'm doing best practice with the marketing to make sure that I stay ahead of the competition. Okay, so let's talk about what you spend some of that yep. um, 200 odd thousand dollars a year on. Yep. So what's the breakup of that uh, personal advertising? Okay, uh, probably around about um, $15,000 a month uh, is going on digital at the moment. Um, and um, this is just purely self-promotion. Uh, I use um, uh, two companies. I use BidPixel and I also use Spoke. Um, and uh, currently we've got around about 32 ads running uh, over Facebook, Instagram and um, Google display ads. Uh, and I'm supplying content on a weekly basis. So it goes from videos to um, uh, uh, like a news article uh, about, um, about property that have maybe been written up in the, the Australian Fin Review, the Australian or the Courier Mail that goes back into my website and we've got the article back there. So I'm constantly supplying them testimonials, just listed, just sold. So every single week, there's a new lot of content coming through in video uh, and images and all that sort of stuff and links back into my website, you know, with all those different news articles. So I'm bombarding them. And what we also are doing is we're retargeting the people that engage. So the, the, the people that watch 50% of the videos, they, there's an audience we create for that. The people that engage with our Facebook, the people that engage with our Instagram and our web, we've got an audience for that and we're re-engaging with that. So how we re-engage with them is we're then starting them ask um, about um, whether they want an appraisal, they want to sell. So it's a different type of marketing where doing the retargeting to the people that have already engaged to yeah, us. Yeah, so if they engage, they get much more direct marketing. Ab absolutely. They, they, it's, yeah, it's not... Tapping yeah, on the yeah, shoulder, yeah, it's yeah. like punch in the face, we're ready to go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, look, it's been an evolution for me as far as what works and what doesn't work. Um, but I now have the formula in place uh, with the two companies that I use. We've got very specialised targeting in the back end so I can really pitch my content towards people that own multi-million dollar homes. And that in itself is a very hard exercise to come up with the targeting um, in the background. But we've cracked that. It's taken us about two years to do that properly. Uh, and now um, I just launched into uh, Ascot digitally only two weeks ago. Uh, I got a $6 million uh, listing just before I came here today. That was straight off Facebook. Okay, they phoned me two days ago and said, hi, Jason, how are you going? I love what you're doing on Facebook. I've seen the videos. I've seen what you're selling. Can you come and list my home? Didn't say come and see my home, come and list my home. So um, the power 
that has, if you're touching the right audience and you've got the right content and you're doing it over time, is unbelievable. It's, it's so much more powerful than getting on the phone and chasing. Mm. So I'm going to come to how many people are just calling you in like that. You mentioned yep. 15,000 out of 20,000 a yep. month, not a yeah, year, yep. Yep. a month yep. is going on digital. This yep. is yep. Facebook, Instagram, Google. Google ads, yep. yep. Where's the other five going? Five's going uh, uh, in the, uh, in the paper. No, well, we do some, we do some targeted uh, direct mail uh, to everyone that owns a property on the river. Uh, but at the moment, I'm doing a bit of print in the uh, Courier Mail. Uh, we started that and we're running that every sort of two weeks. Sometimes we run it every week. I've got some incredible deals on self promo on that at the moment. Uh, for $1,500, I can get a full page in there for self promo. Wow. And that's working too. We're getting listings off that as well. But look, I, I suppose what I'm saying is depending on how much you want to earn depends on how much you're going to spend on self promotion. It's it's, you're running a business out there, you have to do it. You can't put your head in the sand and say, oh, I can't do it, I'm just going to generate the business. You've got to become a media marketing machine that just happens to sell real estate. Powerful. Yeah, really powerful. Okay, so you've been investing and building Adcock Prestige now for so long. Yep. So let's look at some of the benefits of doing so. Yep. How many... Prospecting calls do you make now? Zero. Haven't made a prospecting call for 15 years. How many people call you in that you've never spoken to before? So 60%. Past 60 wow. 60%. Never spoken to them? Never. It's like this, these people in Ascot? Never. I mean, that's powerful, isn't it? What you sell is what you attract. And it doesn't matter what it is. You just, you know, and every, there's lots of different niches out there in the marketplace. You just want to identify one of those niches and own it. Yeah. Okay, so let's just get into some specifics. Someone contacts you, you've never spoken to them before. They want you to come out and see them, list yep. their property. Yep. What are you sending them? Okay, uh, basically I'm getting uh, a lot of information on that uh, telephone call, on getting their email address. Generally, either during the call or just after the call, they're receiving what I call the pre-listing kit. Did you say during that yeah, call? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Either during or just shortly afterwards, because um, uh, I've got my PA, basically the desk beside me, she's like, she knows how it goes. She's been with me 19 years and uh, she, she, knows, she knows what to do. So in that, in, in that email, what they, what they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even have to tell her, she's just doing it. Um, and what, what, what we do is we send them out um, uh, three videos. Uh, the, the videos that they receive, uh, they get one on digital marketing. I've done a, uh, a video on digital marketing that goes for about a minute and a half. It's like a listing presentation, and it was done by Spoke for me, which was good. I send out uh, that auction that we just did before for 7.3 million under the hammer, and I send out the drive-by Dan interview. <laughs> that is, I tell you, that's given me 30 listings, that drive-by Dan interview. It's unbelievable. I'm still marketing it out there to the retargeting audiences on Facebook and people interact with me at the moment. Because people want to get to know you, not just what you do in real estate. That's what that interview does. So they get those three videos. They also, I've all already found out what, uh, where their house price range is. I'm sending them out sales. I'm sending them out two marketing campaigns and I'm sending them out a form six. So they're getting that either on the phone or within five minutes of me getting off the phone to them. By the time I go out and see them, 35 to 40% have already filled out the form six picked out the marketing campaign, and they don't want to really talk to me. It's like, well, this is what we're doing, Jason. Have a bit of a look around. Uh, yeah, we'll go with the auction. We saw the video. Let's go. So I don't need to be there for an hour and a half. I don't need to be there for two hours. I've done the presentation in the email. It's been done. Powerful. Yeah. Really powerful. But I guess that's the, the, the value in building a niche, in building a brand. These people have a need and they just want you to fill it. They want to sell Abs their luxury home, absolutely. they trust you to just do it. You've got to make it easy for them. And the, the biggest thing that's got to be made easy is you, it's got to be easy for them to trust you. Video helps them, it makes them trust you. You know, if they see you doing the auction, they see you talking about digital marketing, they see in the interview with Drive what you like as a person as well. They've got to know you before you've even got out there. 
That is powerful. Pre-listing kits that you drop off their door with a whole heap of stuff just doesn't cut it anymore in this digital age. I've been doing that for the last two and a half years and I really think that should be the standard these days for us as real estate agents. Isn't that amazing? Like the drive-by Dan, 30 listings, average of $3 million. You know, that's a lot of money. Thanks, mate. That's a lot. You did ask the right <laughs> questions. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a hell of a lot of money. You know, out of every drive-by Dan, no one else has ever actually asked for a copy of the video and then spent, how much did you spend boosting that? $7,000 uh, initially as soon as I got it. But I got four listings off that off that seven thousand dollars straight away, including one of my past clients. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At Orchid Flower, yeah, she rang you and oh, told I'm you. I'm aware of that. Yeah, yes. thank you. <laughs> she said thanks for getting us onto Jason. <laughs> and then I took him out for lunch. I don't know. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> but isn't that amazing? There's something interesting there, right? You know, seven thousand dollars grabbed a video, invested in it. I mean. Boom, got it straight out. I didn't muck around. I knew, I knew I could use it. I, as soon as you sent it to me, I, I thought, I don't look like a dick in this. <laughs> and it's important not to look like a dick because most people think we're dicks in real estate. They do. Yet they hear real estate agent, they think, he's a dick. Uh, <laughs> Whereas that interview proves I'm not a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Well, they're ringing. They're ringing and they're wanting me to list their home, so. So 60% uh, of your business now is coming from people that you've never spoken to before. They just know yep. who you are. The other 40% is obviously coming from past clients, referrals, yep. et cetera. Yep. What's your past client relationship strategy? How do you maintain contact with past buyers and sellers after the transaction? Look, I don't call them all the time. I just put them on our email database and they get something from me every week. Um, and that's obviously videos, sold, just sold, articles. And the funny thing is, none of them are unsubscribe. They like getting the stuff. And you know, you've, you've communicated, it, it's like you've been communicating with them all this time. Seven, eight years down the track, you get the call, hey Jace, you know, come and, come and see us, let's, let's get the house sold. And it's like you've, you've only just saw them a couple of days ago. Mm. So that's all I do. I'm not phoning them every year and congratulating them on their anniversary. I think that's a bit dicky. You know, some people send them an anniversary present every year. I'm sorry if anyone does that. I just, with, with, the, with, the, with the type of people... <laughs> with the type of people I deal with, if I did that... Dicks. Real yeah. <laughs> if the type of people I deal with, and they, they just wouldn't, they wouldn't respond well to It'll that. It'll be bottles of Grange in your market. Well, depending, depending on... Look, depending on what they uh, uh, buy and depending on the value, yeah, it depends on what... Uh, get, I mean, some people are getting Maui, some people are getting Cristal. Yeah. So it all, all depends on what they spend. But I don't do the big baskets. I just get a beautiful, um, really nice bottle of champagne. Sometimes four, five, six, seven hundred dollars, uh, and, and a lovely handwritten card. That's that means more to people than a hamper or, or some of these other stuff that you give them. Mm, cool. Okay. So you touched on video. Yep. It's one of the Vi things that I've always... I've got the video going at the moment. So Jason's brought his own kit. Uh, we've, yep. we've purchased him the Rody Go. He's all hooked up uh, and already embracing that. So uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned before is video allows people to build trust. I've yes. talked about the sales funnel. The top of the sales funnel is people need to know you. If they don't know you, obviously video, no Video is the best way of gaining that. Like you, obviously yes. by watching a video, they get to either yep. like you or not like you. And then trust comes yep. with consistency over time. And also does this person know what he's talking about, etc. Yep. So you're saying that video is the most powerful most way. Powerful, most powerful way to cut through and, and get your message across to people and build a relationship for them, with them before you even meet them. And my advice to every agent that's selling property in here, go and get a tripod. They're around about $250. Uh, get either a directional mic that you can plug in the side with a little windsock on it, or you can go the, the fancy one that Dan's given me. I was using the one that I just plugged in the side. <laughs> um, he, he reckons the sound's not that good, but it was pretty good. Um, and and what, what I do with the videos, I do a lot of different things. Every time I sell a property, I'm out the front of the property, I'm telling a 59 second story on what transpired. 
how many social media hits, how many people came through the open, whether it went above reserve, what it sold for, and then I go into, you know, the marketplace is the best that it's been for a decade. If you're thinking of selling now, it's a great time to come to the market. If you'd like an idea of what your property may be worth in the current marketplace, please give me a call on mobile. My details are in the comments below. I've got the, the lingo just learned off, and it took me a little while to get it going, but every time I make a sale, that gets up there, and that gets uh, uh, put out through the whole of the funnel. Uh, I do uh, suburb reports, and I do them every six months uh, on around about 12 different suburbs uh, through Brisbane. I'm probably going to increase that to about 20 different suburbs through Brisbane. I talk about the median house price, and I talk about the dearest uh, house ever sold and the number of sales. That's all I talk about. All I'm doing is making sure that that content is front, in front of people so when they're thinking of coming to the market, they're thinking of me. They're not thinking of anyone else. Um, so the content you can do on these is just unbelievable. I do, uh, one that I did uh, not that long ago was just a sneak peek, 25 second video of this uh, riverfront property that I listed at Yeronga. It wasn't an, even an ad, it was just a sneak peek uh, on an Instagram story uh, with people that obviously follow me. 30 seconds after I posted it, I'm at that seller's house with the seller. Guy gets on the phone and says, hey, Jason, I just saw that Instagram story, that great property that you're at, at Yeronga. Is that 33 or 35 Stephen Street? I said, how do you know that? I didn't say the address. He said, I ski along there all the time. I know where it is, Jason. When can I come and look at it? Saw it the next day, bought it. Sold off in an Instagram story from a sneak peek Instagram video. So you just got to constantly be putting stuff up all the time. Look, it will reward you in sales, it will reward you in leads, and it will just become uh, part of what you do. Um, and I think, to me, it's probably the most important thing that I stepped up in 2020. Video? Absolutely. I stepped it up, and at one stage, oh, I was a lunatic, um, at one stage I was doing live Fridays, Every single Friday at two o'clock, I did that for like six or seven months, uh, uh, and they went between three to five minutes. I talked about um, what I'd sold. I talked about uh, what had uh, gone under contract. I talked about new listings. I talked about open houses, and you know, just various different things. I think that's what really shot me up was doing those lives. And what I did do is, once you've finished the live, it uh, saves on your phone as a. Um, uh, like a high definition video, but it also does that on Facebook. Then I boosted the shit out of that every single week, that live, and I boosted it for five or six days and was spending probably a grand a week, 1,000 to 1,500 a week, boosting the live that I did. And some people are spending $50. No, you, you can't. Hear the just... level of difference here to really go pro. Like we're talking hard, this is hardcore shit, right? Yep. You're not you know, putting a, a just listed or a just sold tile uh, up, you know my thoughts on them. Uh, we're doing video, we're not putting $50 boost behind it or no boost. Uh, you know, we're putting a lot of money behind it. Well, the, the, How much engagement are you getting? How many people you, are seeing these? You, you, huge engagement. Like, um, this is the interesting statistic. That drive-by Dan video, which is nine minutes, 18% watched it till the end. That's ridiculous on a nine minute video. That's ridiculous. On the, 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 uh, the one and a half minute videos that we do, probably 75% are watching it all the way through to the end, which is a high engagement, and, very high engagement. And how many people like, might be seeing some of these videos that you're throwing money behind? Okay, uh, they were averaging between 27,000 to 35,000 views per week. You mentioned you were doing the lives. Yep. You mentioned the script that you just said before on videos. It rolls off the tongue now, but it yep. didn't originally. Yep. You, something that I'm picking up, you might all be picking up the same thing. You've embraced uncomfortableness. Absolutely. Like it, was, it must have been uncomfortable to start doing lives. Chelsea, how many takes did I used to do on these videos when I first started out? Like 30. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. She'd get so pissed Chelsea, off. Chelsea, how much she fun was, was that? <laughs> <laughs> She'd go, Dad, get your shit together. Get your shit together. And then now, I'll almost nail it, first go. Get it up, bang. You know, it's usually first go every time now. But when I started out, it was take after take after take until I got my groove. By that second or third week we were doing the videos, it just rolled off the tongue. It was very uncomfortable to start with, but you so just what, got... Why did you do it? You've told us why you did okay. something that seems uncomfortable, okay. like going million plus in a market where there's a hundred okay. sales. I was scared at the beginning of COVID that we were going to be fucked. 
as far as, yeah, I was scared, incredibly scared. Like the, the fear that was inside me when all this was going down, I, and all I said to myself is, I've got to step it up. I've got to, I've got to make sure that whatever is getting sold out there, I want the lion's share of that shit. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that it's true. I wanted to get the lion's share of what was out there. So we, we embraced video, like incredibly embraced video, and just make sure that we were consistent with it, just doing it all the time. Mm, you yeah. know, so that fear it was born out of fear. Mm. Fear, of, fear of failing. Fear of failing. Yeah. Yeah, but isn't it funny because fear of failing can push people to not do it and fear of yeah. failing can push people to do it oh, yeah. and so it's pushing you to do it, which yeah. is really fantastic. You don't want to fail. Jason, we're, we're nearing the end of the time that we've got. Yeah. Um, you've been in this game for 27 years. Yep. You've just written just over $2 million. Your target this year is to do $4 million. Yep. Where does your drive come from now? We did a session earlier this morning on finding your purpose. Where does your drive come from to, to keep going, to keep doing this? I'm just a very, very competitive person. Competition. Yeah, yeah. I've all, ever since I was little, if I'm going to do something, I've got to, I've got to be the best. Absolutely be the best. Uh, you just, if you're going to do it, you go pro. There's, there's no point just doing it half-hearted. I'm very, very competitive. Obviously, family is a big part of it. Uh, my wife and my two girls, Chelsea and Holly. Um, and uh, I absolutely love um, doing what I do. I, I, love, I love coming up with all the different ways that we can sort of get out there and, and be competitive in a marketplace and be a, a boutique brand. We compete against the big brands and we win. We win a lot. Like that one that I sold for 7.3, I was up against the biggest agents in Brisbane on that one there. We charged more commission and our marketing campaign was 20 grand more. We still got the business. And they rocked, some of them rocked up at the auction to see it sell. It was fantastic. We liked that. <laughs> that, just get, that just gave me an inner glow. Yeah. That that's gave like, me that's like in cage fighting, isn't yeah. it? Where like someone's yeah. like knocked them out, but while they're down, before the yeah. ref thing, they still punch them in the face again. Yeah. Like that's what yeah. that's what that is. Well, well what, <laughs> the guy that missed out on it was at the auction. I just turned around and gave the big smile <laughs> after the hammer went down. Um, it was fantastic. I loved it. That was probably the best part of it. <laughs> and the 128,000 commission. 182. 182. Sorry. 500. 500. Uh, that was that, maybe that was that 500 that we had on ours. Hey, uh, we're over time, but I yeah. want to give you guys an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, anything. Uh, questions from the floor. Levi. You do your own auctions, right? Yes, I do. You find that there's a bit of a, a value add to your clients? Because it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty unique. Not a lot of people call their own auctions. I think that's pretty cool. It is the most powerful thing that you can do if you're a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. There's only about three or four agents in Brisbane that are agents and auctioneers. And it is incredible, powerful when you're sitting at the table and you're saying to a seller, guess what? Not only am I the agent that's going to be looking after you, the sale of your house, I'm the auctioneer. I know the house like the back of my hand. I'll know the buyers uh, like the back of my hand. And when it comes to making sure that I get the best dollar for you on auction day, no one's going to get more money than me. The other auctioneer rocks up five minutes prior to the auction, doesn't know the buyers, doesn't know the house. So if, if you want to get out of your comfort zone and you want to have uh, another uh, weapon in your arsenal, get good at calling auctions because it is very powerful. Jason, we talked about uh, implementing more auctions through yep. this year. Absolutely. Uh, you're crazy if you're not auctioning at the moment. Lunatic. I didn't put it that way, but... Uh, <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> I actually say that to sellers. You're a lunatic if you're not going to sell. And then, I, and, and then they've seen that video and they go, yeah, OK, we're auctioning. Um, why do you feel like auction is such an important strategy? Look, at the moment, the marketplace is on the upward swing. What it's worth at the beginning of the listing and what it's worth at the end of the listing could be more. The only way to get more is to auction it. There's no other way to do it properly. Well, what about for you personally with building your business and your brand? Oh, yeah. Well, massive amounts of vendor paid advertising in every single auction campaign. But whether it's auction, expressions of interest or sale by negotiation of price, I get the same marketing. It's regardless, but I prefer the auctions. The auctions, just, you know, that particular auction, we had 200 people at that auction, and they all went away talking about that sale. They'll be talking about that sale for the next few years. How so, many out of those 200 do you reckon you then listed their properties? Uh, I've got four coming up from that. They're all priced between five and eight million. Lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any more questions while we've got Jason? Andrew. Uh, Jason, last year you said you had a video 
smashed it, and yep. um, so that's that's good. But what what have you had to drop off from your normal weeks from the year before to do the video? What would be nothing. Irrelevant? No, oh, okay. no, no, look, I just I just up the ante. I just get up earlier. I'm a lunatic. I, I wake up at about 4.30 these days um, and sort of at work by sort of 8.30, um, 9 o'clock. But I do a lot of stuff in those early hours of the morning as far as, um, you know, building stuff for social media and content so I can flick off to my promo guys to sort of get out there. Um, look, I, one thing that we didn't touch on before is Canva. If, if, if you don't have Canva, get a Canva account, uh, canva.com, um, and get your... Uh, a graphic designer to build you up the templates for all the different things that you want for your social media. They can drop them into Canva and you can build content to get out there all the time via that. Okay, any more questions? What happened to the cufflinks? The ad cop cufflinks? Oh, I'm just not wearing uh, the, uh, uh, the cuff shirt today, but yeah, I wear them all the time. That's my. Yep. She sent me your shit on real estate. <laughs> 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 Just what you want your mum to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, still, still, they're the, my brand. I've still got them. I, obviously, I only wear them if I've got the cuff shirts on. And I, I, wear, I only wear the cuff shirts now on Saturdays. Final question. Yeah, I, ru I run at a pretty hard pace. So um, I've got my wife helping me in the business a couple of days a week. She's obviously helping with all the opens on Saturdays and another day during the week. I've got a, obviously a full-time PA, which I've had sort of 18, 19 years. Um, Chelsea helps me out every now and then at the moment. Not as much as she used to, but every now and then. But I am looking for a, a sales association. I've been advertising, haven't found one because I'm really sort of ramping it up this year. Running all opens, all inspections. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I said final question. We've got a question, I think, from Remy and one from Lou. Lou, you're first. Um, we've just been approached by somebody with a $5 million property. Yep. In our area. Yep. We don't think it's quite $5 million, yep. but we're happy to give it a go. Yep. Um, any advice? Okay. Uh, find out their motivation. Their motivation. Okay. What's the motivation? They want to sell it because they don't even live in it. They built it to sell it. Oh, well, they're selling. Yeah, well, they're selling. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you've got to go hard with a marketing campaign. Uh, you're going to have to do uh, a combination of print and digital media marketing. Uh, what you, what's the biggest print magazine up there? Well, we're not really looking for a local, a local buyer. We're looking for no, 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 that's okay, but what print is the biggest magazine up there? Okay, so there's nothing that's like, okay. Okay, well, I'd advertise in the Courier Mail because chances are the buyer's going to come from South East Queensland. So I'd have, I, I, and the, the deals they're doing in the Courier Mail at the moment are ridiculous. And they're also giving you uh, a free component of digital media marketing that can target Southern buyers and expats coming back from overseas, as well as local buyers. I'd make sure that you do an incredible video. Uh, the company that I would use is a company by the name of TV House, Simon Russell. You've got to do a, like a one and a half to two minute video, but he'll also do a 59 second video that he'll do in square format and in uh, Instagram story format, so you can put it on all platforms. Um, and uh, I would also um, do a direct mail brochure to all the people over a certain price point uh, within a 10 kilometer radius of the house. So that's what I would do. I would either auction it or I would run an expressions of interest campaign uh, with a closing deadline. I would prefer to auction it, something like that, because auctions, you're a lunatic if you don't auction, you just <laughs> got to tell him that. Um, but yeah, that's what, that's what I would do. Uh, the digital media marketing, um, you can also do through Spoke as well. Uh, you want to do at least a three to $5,000 component on the digital marketing. Great, thank you, Remy. Yep. Very, very successful. Yep. My question is, if you go on holidays, this morning we had work-life balance and yep. you know, people's family. If you go on holidays for two to three weeks, what happens to your 
I just tell them I'm going on holidays, and it's usually it's 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 yeah, I'm going to be away for a while. Um, but but I, I, gen I generally go at times where it's absolutely dead at the prestige sector. So this year, from about the 23rd of December until about uh, the 7th or 8th of January, I was away. But I wasn't really. I mean, I was down the coast, but. I was still taking calls and doing emails. I mean, you just don't shut off from people that want to buy multi-million dollar homes. And I can send them emails. I can send them a contract. We can do DocuSign, all that sort of stuff. But I go away um, uh, three times a year. So it's usually at the end of the year. Easter, I usually go away for a few days. And then uh, early July, in the July school holidays, I go away for a week as well. And I just tell people they're fine with that. All right, we're well over time. Yep. Uh, Jason, thank you very much. Please put your hands together. Thank you, mate. Fantastic. Thank you.